Hi and welcome to this week's Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons Teaching. It's great to be back with you all. This week is part three in our five part anxiety series and today we are looking at anxiety caused by traumatic memories of the past and how you can overcome this. Okay, David, so let's start with some definitions. What do we mean when we say traumatic memories of the past? How is that different from, say, a normal memory? I think that's the first and most important question, Alex. And when I'm working with my clients, this is what I focus on. When you talk about trauma, are you describing the event or are you describing the emotional experience and feelings that you're creating and I will say with everyone I work with who is experiencing trauma in their lives this is what gets confused they confuse with speaking about the event to the emotional feelings then they give the emotional feelings the label of trauma and then they kind of get stuck into the carousel. So, of course, when we're talking about memories, we're talking about stuff that's happened in the past. That's right. So, I guess the way the anxiety is coming is a description of the emotional feelings we are experiencing now related to a recollection of stuff that has happened to us in the past. And, but the two are very intertwined. And I guess this is the purpose of this video is to talk, to pull the things apart to see if we can reconcile and heal what's going on. That really is a life lesson of this video. You have to separate the incident, the situation, the event, the stimuli, whatever you want to call it from the emotional feeling that you are creating. Let me say again, this is very important. I am not saying you shouldn't create emotional feelings. I'm not saying emotional feelings are not natural. It's absolutely natural. But if you combine those two together, they become such a big, unsurmountable problem that you can't deal with. Because are you talking about a traumatic event? For a lot of my clients, it's a traumatic event that happened in their childhood or in their early years. And as you say, the emotional feelings, anxiety, trauma, you see, we give them these names. But this is what you are creating in the present moment. And this confusion really adds to the burden and adds to weighing you down. And so you almost get lost in your own maze of this word trauma and traumatic experience. And I guess the examples we're talking about here, David, are where someone has experienced an incredible upheaval, challenge, uh, upset in terms of an event that's happened to them in their childhood or earlier in their life and we're now and 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 that has left a psychological I guess we could call it residue but what we're talking about the residue is to do with the memory of the event is to do with our beliefs and our thoughts around the event so that's the memory and we're not denying that mm. that was an awful thing a bad thing an upsetting thing at the time. The issue is now, years later, decades later for many of your clients, the that memory is on a on a kind of a psychological loop. It's on a loop because it's impacted how they th they think about themselves, what they believe about themselves, what they believe around about the world, what they believe about important people in their life. And that is now on a on a playback loop and and it's it's the beliefs around what happened which is creating the emotional 
reaction and the feelings, the red light feelings that we often call anxiety, stress, trauma. Yeah, so this is where it falls into the model of the inner child so well. The way you just described is absolutely right. Something happened to you in your childhood, something really big, a death, a split up in your family, mother and father leaving home, anything like that that's traumatic. And when you were a child, it was almost let's say, above your pay grade. You couldn't deal with it. The cognitive reasoning wasn't there. And so those issues in your belief system have become unresolved. You may even call yourself a victim, a traumatic person. I can't get over this traumatic experience. So again, you use the language which confuses the emotion that you experienced with the event that's taken place. And this confusion between the event and the emotion is what you carry along with you all of your life. Because as Alex has just explained so well, those events then change your belief system. And here's the life lesson again. And so you're looking through life through the same lens as you did when you were six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're viewing things through those lens and creating the emotional feelings now. So just think about this. The emotional feelings that you are experiencing, we're focusing on anxiety, is not something you created 20, 30 years ago. You're creating that now. Today, tomorrow, that's something that you're creating. Now, why are you creating it? Because you have a event, a memory, a situation that you haven't accepted and resolved. So it's almost like you're reliving the same thing every day in your subconscious mind. You don't wake up in the morning and think this, but that story, as Alex has just explained, is playing in your mind all of the time. And then you look for people, incidences, and the mind goes, ah, pattern. I know what's going to happen here. I know what they're going to do. Oh, they're going to leave me. in the, so I'm going to be abandoned here. I'm going to be left alone. They're going to turn away. They're going to criticize me. And it runs that story that pattern in in your mind and then you create the red light feelings and and david for a lot of people um when they've got uh, these traumatic memories that are playing on a loop uh it can be like a low level negative impact on their life so as you say they start trying to future proof trying to strategize trying to avoid situations that they think are going to fall into the same pattern as to what they experienced with the traumatic event but for some people they can be the the memory can be quite deeply buried in their subconscious mind and something will happen with a person or a situation and it brings that memory right up into the fourth or into their mind and it almost the memory is experienced again and it can almost take your breath away um, how destabilizing these traumatic memories can be because it's almost like, you know, as I say, this ha could have happened decades ago, but the emotional impact is can almost be as, as shocking as when it happened the first time round. Absolutely. And this is why it's so important in this life lesson to separate the incident, the event from the emotions that you're creating, because this is what's going to happen. So that part of the mind, the subconscious mind that I prefer to call the inner child, will set up a kind of a belief system is I never want to experience that again. Now, as you say, whether that's future-proving, whether that's pleasing people, whether that's avoiding, whether that's procrastination, whether that's pushing people away, whether that's locking you down, it will have so many techniques for everyone. So you may have developed, if this is of interest to you, you may have developed your own technique 
but it's that part of the mind that set in what the inner child called protection or safety. And the whole point is, you cannot protect yourself, A, from something that happened decades ago. So I'm going to say that again. You cannot protect yourself from something that's already happened. And you can't protect yourself from the future because you don't know what's going to happen. And then most importantly, and here again is a very important life lesson we're discussing in this video, you cannot protect yourself against your own emotions. How can you protect yourself from something that you create? Understand why you create them, and then you will stop creating them. The emotions don't control you. Remember, you are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim of them. You cannot be a victim of an emotion and protect yourself against an emotion that you are creating. Okay, David, so it's quite clear that the first step in kind of healing and, and working through this is the ex awareness, then acceptance that there was the event and it and it wasn't appropriate, it wasn't good, it shouldn't have happened, whatever type of event it was that created the impact on your life. So what you're describing there, Alex, in our model is the golden thread process. Okay. From the golden thread process, you start from the emotion. Mm -hmm. So let's call it trauma if you want to. I prefer to call it red light emotion. I am experiencing trauma. The next question is now why? And that goes to what you're saying. Now we're separating the emotion from the event. And we do the why, why, why which then takes us back to the event, the stimuli, the cause, what happened. So we're acknowledging the uncomfortable red light feelings, which we're either going to call trauma or anxiety. And we're, and we're pausing. We're taking a breath. We're not allowing ourselves to become overwhelmed by the red light feelings. We're acknowledging the feelings. They're real. They're real, they're uncomfortable, Absolutely. they're unwanted, they're hindering us. But we pause and we say, why? What is going on? What am I thinking or believing That's in this right. moment that is causing this emotional reaction in me? And this is where we identify what we're thinking about. You said something extremely important then, Alex. What am I thinking in this moment that's the key. Because if I'm creating red light feelings in this moment, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, believing something in this moment. Okay. And that, in the case of traumatic memories, what you're thinking about is you're recalling, you're replaying in your mind something that happened in the past that you haven't resolved. And possibly you're recalling that in relation to something that's going on in that's your right. life in this current moment. Right. But it's still a thought. It's still the 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 trauma, the the challenge, the inappropriate thing in with regard to traumatic memories is not happening in the here and now. Yes. And we, and we need to compassionately acknowledge that. Yes. This is this is playing in my mind. This is not necessarily playing out in reality in this present current moment. That's right, because then we will, will have developed a belief system based on that incident, that event. And it would normally circle around what we call in our model the three lies. I'm not good enough. Well, that incident there proves I wasn't good enough because if I was good enough, my mum wouldn't have left. If I was good enough, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, this wouldn't have happened. Or... The number one thing in this trauma that I find, I can't cope. I can't cope. I couldn't cope then. I won't be able to cope now. Mm -hmm. I'm almost telling myself, this is too much. You've used the word already. I will be overwhelmed. It'll be like a tsunami uh, effect of me. I need to avoid it. I need to control it. 
I need to protect myself. I need to be safe. And so these beliefs are racing through your mind. And this is another thing that clients don't quite understand is you don't talk about them the way that we're talking about them carefully, logically. You talk, it's like a blink of an eye. These go through, bang, 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 bang. I can't cope. I've got to do it. It's too much. Oh, my goodness. Look at the feelings. Oh, my chest is tight. Got sweaty palms. I just want to run and hide. So this is happening almost at supersonic speed, mm -hmm. you know, like a blink of an eye. But that's what we are trying to do in this life lesson. Separate the emotion from the event. Slow everything down. Take a breath. Drop your shoulders. Think about it. What is this reminding you of? What are you saying to yourself? Mm -hmm. What is that self-talk? We've done many videos on self-talk, but that self-talk is so programmed into you, you don't understand it, so slow it all down. Think it through. Hopefully, this teaching will help you just to slow down. Write it down. What am I, when they said that, what did I think? What did I believe? That's why the golden thread is so powerful. Why? Why did I think that? When they looked at me that way, why did I think that? Mm. So that's really powerful, Alex. And I think, David, it's for me, it's helpful to, when we get the emotional experience in the moment because of an adult current experience we're having or we're anticipating, and we think, okay, wh what's going on here? What am I thinking or believing? to connect the dots back to almost like the first time I created that feeling. So to do with self-doubt, to do with uh, a belief that I can't cope, to, to do with a belief that I'm being rejected here, I'm not lovable, I've, I'm a bad girl or I'm yeah. a bad boy. If we actually slow down and think about this, it's like we are connecting back to the child we were who had that, f that first experience or that first series of experiences. And I think this is where we have to be very compassionate with ourselves, mm. with what's going on, because, you know, this is the part where we need to reach out to that part of our mind which is stuck in the past that inner child part of us as as a kind of wise loving compassionate parent and say you know there is that was a misunderstanding you know you are lovable you are good enough you can cope and but we don't do we don't do that connection and compassion and reparenting to that child who is stuck in the loop of the memory of what happened. And, and that's why we call it in our model again, reparenting. Yeah. And we've done lots of teachings on this idea of reparenting. But as Alex has just explained, you almost have to be the parent that you never had. You have to treat yourself differently than you experienced. You have to hold your standards. I would say, from my point of view, you have to treat yourself on a spiritual level of truth, honesty, and integrity. This is what breaks it through because this is the resolution. We can't change what happened, as Alex explained. What happened may be unfair, may have been unjust, wish it didn't happen, but it did. We haven't got a time machine. We can't go back and make everybody change and it suddenly work out right the way you wanted it to be. It is a chapter in your life. I want to help you close that chapter and move on because ahead of you, you've got so many exciting new chapters to write and to learn and to live. Don't keep on reverting back don't put yourself on that repeat mode that you keep on going back and you will find things in your current life which is almost like a confirmation bias, the self-fulfilling prophecy that it just keeps repeating. 
And so if you notice all, if you ever say, here we go again, this is always happening to me. Why do I always get rejected? Why do I always get left? Why do I always get this? Why does this always happen? This is for you because you have a memory connected closely to an emotional feeling that you haven't separated and resolved and done this work that we are suggesting here. And I think, David, this is where, I guess, the thread of what we're teaching here is, well, through all our work, is accountability and self-responsibility. And in this in this case, we're talking about accepting that we couldn't control what happened in the past, particularly when we were younger, we didn't have the emotional, practical, cognitive awareness or, or the, the kind of power to do anything. So what happened, happened. It was inappropriate. It was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. We couldn't control it. What we can do now is we can control what's going on in terms of once we understand and accept this is a memory on replay, this is my inner child holding on to a misconception that it's unlovable, that it's not good enough, that it's never going to be able to cope when things go wrong or don't go as planned. We can control what we believe and think now as an adult with more life experience, with more emotional awareness. And we certainly can control our emotional responses. And that, that's a thread that goes through all of our work. So this is about accountability for the current, not, not what happened in the past. And I, and, and I also want to say, David, when we touch into that inner child, when we realize that it's our inner child stuck on this replay loop, we also get a sense of how, how lost the inner child believes it is, how exposed the inner child believes it is, how the inner child believes that it's got no one to help it. And that's, again, where this we need to step up and be accountable and self-responsible in that regard because it is absolutely our job to be the wise parent to our misunderstood, confused inner child. And I think this is what takes this model of ours slightly different because at the base of what you just experienced there, it means for me us connecting to our spirituality. Mm -hmm. And by that, I'm not talking about anything about angels, religion, or anything outside of you. What I'm saying is there's something deep inside of you that I call Shen. You could call it your spirituality, your innate goodness, your innate worth, your value. That's something that somebody can't give to you. Somebody can't remove from you. You have that. And the more you connect to that part of you, you may want to call your intuition, your gut feeling, your inner knowing, your higher self, whatever word you want to use. Don't get stuck on the words, but there's something inside of you that I know that you know is there. You know it's there. And this lifts you above whatever you want to call trauma, disappointment, abandonment, rejection. This spirituality lives you above it. And then you can reparent that part of your mind that badly needs this information, as Alex says. You have spiritual wings. You can fly. And you have to convince that part of your mind that we're calling the inner child. The world is not against it. Trauma doesn't lay around the next corner. The world's out, not out to get you. This is your journey. You are unique. You are awesome. Awesome. There is no one in the universe like you. And this is why you have to do this work. This is why this life lesson is so important. Separate the emotions from the event. Go and resolve the event. You can't change the event. 
if he, if I agree with you, it was totally unjust, unfair. Can't change it. In fact, that to me proves how awesome you are because you know what? You came through it. You came through it. You are a coping machine. Now it's time that uh, Alex says, recognize that about yourself. Give yourself love, kindness, and compassion because this is your journey. There are great things waiting for you. It's time now to open up and to live your life and to be in your flow, to be in your Wu Wei. Thank you, David. And for those of you who are interested more in learning about this concept of Shan and your spirituality and your wise inner self, I will put a link in the show notes to our Shen video playlist. And I'll also put a link to our extensive inner child playlist, which has lots of practical tips and advice on there to help you do this reparenting work, which is so necessary when it comes to dealing with being emotionally, mentally stuck in the past and, and, and not wanting to let go i really really hope you enjoyed this teaching please do let us know and perhaps if you have doubt with similar issues in terms of overcoming uh, traumatic memories of the past and anxiety associated with us let us know how you managed it what did you learn we would absolutely love to hear from you in next week's teaching we are going to be looking at anxiety and perfectionism and self-criticism and really digging deep to understand what is going on and how to resolve it so do tune in for that as well i'll also put a link in the show notes to our previous episodes in this anxiety series as well So David works every week with clients all over the world via Zoom video call on exactly the sort of issues we've talked about today. If you'd like to learn more about David's one-to-one consultations via Zoom video call, check out the link in the show notes. And finally, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce new long-form teachings every Saturday, as well as two midweek short snippets of wisdom for you to enjoy. So do subscribe. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye-bye.